we're gonna have some fun. Whoa, that's a solid Muskoka bike. Guess what? There are largemouth bass in Lake Muskoka. And this is kind of weather conditions. You don't know what to expect, right? That's getting better. <laughs> the Fish in Canada Show, brought to you in part by Coleman, the outdoor company, Cooper Tires, Prince Craft Boats, dominate the waters, and Garmin. If lifestyles of the rich and famous were to shoot an episode in the Muskoka region of Ontario, and in particular on Rosso, Joseph, or Muskoka Lakes, they would indeed have a tough time narrowing down who they would feature. It seems like every second cottage here is owned by someone either rich or famous. You could say it's Ontario's version of Beverly Hills on the water. Since Rich and Famous wasn't on location here this week, I decided to bring the Fishing Canada crew up and film our own episode. I'm not going to worry too much about the rich, but I am going to try and bring a bit more fame to the fishing in this great destination. Angelo and I, along with some good fishing buddies, have shot shows here in the past, and we always conclude with the same question. Why don't more people fish here? Oh my God, look at the size of that walleye! Nowhere else are you going to find that kind of quality anywhere, anywhere in this part of the world. Yeah. Except Muskoka now. Yeah. Muskoka. For this trip, I'm teaming up with Mike Smith, a local fishing guide who covers a broad area of Ontario, but loves concentrating on the lakes in the Muskoka region. I offer guiding service right through most of the Muskoka region, uh, covering the big three lakes, which is Lake Joseph Rosso and Lake Muskoka. And then I do a lot of small back lakes kind of in the region that uh, will fish early in the season and tend to fish the big three later in the season. We'll be fishing Lake Muskoka today, concentrating first on walleye and pike. And if all that goes well, and even if it doesn't, then we can shift over to smallmouth. It's great to have options. As we headed out to Mike's first walleye and pike spot, I was happy to see that he wanted to use artificial baits. That means we're going after aggressive fish, not having to drag live meat while pleading for a taker. Now I'm not saying anything against live bait for walleye, and in fact, we do have some just in case, because it's amazingly effective. However, it should never be your only choice. I'm assuming like any place, if, if they're active, they'll hit artificials. If they're inactive, then you gotta kinda Drop meat on them if you sometimes have to. Yeah. It was agreed that three to five inch flukes and swim baits fished on a jig head would be a good starting point. With this presentation, we'd have a great shot at a walleye or a pike. And if there's any smallmouth around, there's a chance they'd smack it as well. I think it's kind of odd when these spots, it's not like a lot of walleye lakes that I've fished. It's normally seem to get, in general, one to three fish off a spot. Yep. And then pop, pop, and then done, right? Yeah. They, they never seem to get really huge schools on them, just a scattering of fish, I guess. And That's weird, eh? So I kind of do a more of a run and gun. You, yeah. You know, you get get a couple on a spot and hit another one. and. I don't blame me, yeah. Our plan is to fish what we feel are the major feeding areas of classic structures. The tips of underwater points, high spots on humps, flats around islands, and so on. They're littered throughout Lake Muskoka. We have a lot of work ahead of us. Of course, it's starting to rain again. <laughs> of course. Typically today, I, I would have pulled the pin. We would not be out on this water. It's just too windy, too rough. Woohoo! Wow. That's about as strong as it gets, boys and girls. Uh, the only places that we're able to really going to be able to even stand up in the boat or are going to be lee of islands and uh, not necessarily where there's high percentage of getting into fish but it's kind of the only fishable water that we can get into today so we'll give it our best shot in in this area oh, get out of that there you go thanks John. he's decent it's a nice pike yeah We learned something from Gord Pizer um, about cold fronts, and it's not about smallmouth or walleye or pike or anything like that. It's about zooplankton. It all shuts down. It won't. It won't reproduce right now. 
right. has gone the abyss. Yeah. So the minnows yeah. know that, so they just hide out. Right. Perch know that, and they just hide out. Smallmouth know that, so they say, okay, this happens every week. Yeah. Here's our break time. Right. And it makes sense. Yeah. So it's not really about the predator, it's more about the prey. Come on, there's gonna be one big predator swimming around here that's... Ready for breakfast? Yeah, I just don't... He says enough, but I don't, I don't believe in cold fronts and weather systems and <laughs> all this crap. All these angler guy dudes <laughs> spew for an excuse not to catch fish. <laughs> Pike. A pike. Pike? Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, but at least something bit, bud. You know what? For our opener fish, for our first one in the boat, dirty, dirty dog. Oh, a jig popped out. Thank you. You're a nice little fishy for doing that. Look at his lip. The mandible or the maxillary? What is that? The mandible or the maxillary? You being a fishing guide and a smart man. <laughs> I'm going to say mandible. <laughs> right on, buddy. I'll agree with you. That's been probably caught before. Uh, yeah. Caught released, but obviously that guy eats again. I think we got a northern again. Uh-oh. I got a feeling these northerns are counting these spots, but you know what? Might not be, is it? But you saw them? Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> they do pull though, don't they? Yeah. <laughs> he tried to jump out of the net. <laughs> yeah, if we can catch a walleye that big. <laughs> yeah, nice light. See you, buddy. Oh, look at him trying to go down. <laughs> Three shots. <laughs> okay. There's got to be a walleye. There's got to be a walleye around these spots. Remember at the first of the show when I referred to the rich and famous in this area? Well, check out these numbers I pulled from a local real estate website. In 2016, they sold 125 cottages on Lake Muskoka with an average price of over $1,200,000. Muskoka is apparently where the poorest of the rich go. On Rosso, they sold 57 cottages, averaging over 2100000 Finally, on Joseph, they only sold a mere 50 cottages, but the average price turned in at a whopping $2,299,740. And how about those fancy little boathouses you see there? So what, what would a boathouse like that be worth? That right there. Just the boathouse alone. Any ideas? Two fifty, three hundred grand to build it. <laughs> Two hundred fifty to three hundred thousand. I'm surprised they let a bushwhacker like me anywhere near this lake. There you go. I don't know if he's a good one or not. That looks good, no? A little walleye. Yeah, he's decent. He's not huge, but. Two, three, four, five. Uh, oh no, little guy. He's all right, like the bigger than I thought. He looks smaller in the water, right? Yeah. Little, little fatty. Yeah, nice little guy. Little. Didn't even show up on the screen, that guy. No. Nope. What? Yeah. Decent. Well, he looks like he's pulling good. Yeah. He's I'm going to get the net. Well, they're a pike. Got him? Yeah, yeah. Got him. oh, yeah, he's a pike. Oh, a pike. Yeah. Oh. No. Oh, nice, nice one. Nice size pike, though. Yeah. Don't wake me off, buddy. Yeah, he's in the corner, so you're good. Ooh, easy, girl. Oh, come on. There, now bring him around if you can. Oh, get out of that. There you go. Nice job. He's decent. That's a nice pike. Yeah. Nice pike. Yeah. Good fish, buddy. Hey, that's yeah. a solid. Nice one, eh? Let's go with a pike. Yeah. Beautiful. Nice, guy. Yeah. nice. nice and healthy. So you know what? He's fat, eh? Yeah. He's not a long fish, but he is a stocky. Yeah. Look at the, 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 the 
Right, there's like something right in there too. Yeah, there's a chunk. Yep. It's a long drop down from this boat. Yeah. There, give him one flip. One flip down he goes. That'd be gone. Good work, man, at least that's something. I mean, this is kind of weather conditions, you don't know what to expect, right? Yeah. Like your jigs, your jigs, your lines everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're, these things are so strong, he'll rip the weeds apart. Ooh, seven feet of pure jig stealing granite. I don't know what all is down there, but all kinds of snaggy crap. I got something. A little, little walleye. A little walleye. Get in here. Whoa. See, that's the way you do it in a big tournament in derbies. Tournament walleye. I needed a walleye so bad. <laughs> <laughs> Up on the jig stealing rocks. See, he's, yeah. he's full of pep right now, this guy. Yeah, you know what? Perfect timing. Look at that. The sunlight right on him. Huh? Nice little chunk. Yeah, you know. Easy. There are solid fish here, I will say that. Although Mike and I have had a great day so far, our average size is well down from a normal day on Muskoka. With 4 to 5 pound walleye and 12 to 15 pound pike being very common here, something's off. I think we'll call it a day and maybe pick up on smallmouth fishing tomorrow. If you want to make a fishing trip successful, you got to open up all the doors. It's bass day on Lake Muskoka today, and what a perfect morning it is. I'm running solo for the first part of the day as my fishing partner for this trip, Mike Smith, had to run a couple of errands and would meet up with me later. Since I want to stay close to the boat launch, I thought I'd take a shot at the elusive Lake Muskoka largemouth bass. They're said to be here, but I've never caught one. I chose a back bay that Mike suggested yesterday on our way back to the ramp. The bay looks just too good. It's perfect. It's eel grass, lily pads, docks, um, some milfoil, some coontail. It's got every type of weed in here. Grass, mats, you name it. It's got it all. So if there's largemouth in the lake, I think you've really got to pick and choose your, your spots here. I'm, I'm sure there's only a handful of bays that have largemouth in them, but it's, it's a perfect body of water for them. So why not? Dirty old pike. Oh, he's buried in the weeds. But look at the, they're, they're, these things are so strong, he'll rip the weeds apart. Man, I thought I had a bass there. He streaked out. I think he's tired. I don't know if I can grab him like this. Yeah. yeah, you know what? He's fun. As long as you don't break off, he's fun in a, in a lake that's not known for too much largemouth. And I'm just trying to get one in here. Um, threw right beside that dock of the Senko. One pull in. One pull, he did, uh, it did nothing on the drop. One pull, and then all of a sudden I just whooshed sideways. What do we got? Large mouth. Large mouth. Okay. Guess what? There are large mouth bass in Lake Muskoka. Look at that, would you? Somebody told me that I got to talk to a guy yesterday. He says he's been fishing here 17 years and hasn't caught one yet. I've been here 17 minutes. Got one. <laughs> I love it. I just wanted to see if they were here because I heard they were. Oh, cool. What a great way to start the day. Skipping Senkos and pitching jigs around docks, wood, and pads in search of a possible largemouth. Mission accomplished. That's getting better. Now we're gonna have some fun. End this trip off perfectly. <laughs> to get to this episode's gorgeous destination, I first drove north on Highway 400 and then took the Highway 11 exit just north of Barrie. I next took Road 18 into the town of Gravenhurst and then turned left on James Street West. Finally, I turned left on North Muldrew Lake Road and one last left on Muskoka Bay Boulevard taking me to my fantastic accommodations at Muskoka Bay Resort. If you're looking for the ultimate in a golfing and fishing destination, this place is definitely it. It's a short drive from the accommodations to either the clubhouse or the public well-maintained boat launch on Lake Muskoka. Now it's time to meet back up with Mike and see if we can get any smallmouth going. 
Contrary to largemouth, Lake Muskoka has a strong population of smallies. Yeah. Fairly quick break along there. Oh my God, that was great, Jason. The spinner bait's it's gonna work. It's a, windy enough to work. I don't know, even know how big he is to tell you. They didn't get a good look at him. Might as well net him, I guess. If it, have the net handy just in yep. case. Yep. Oh yeah, he's not bad. He's a nice fish, yeah. Oh, here he comes. Nice. Oh, nice. <laughs> Cast up the spinner bait when we come back to the plant. Wow, that was quick. Just pull in, first cast. That's getting better. Now we're gonna have some fun. End this trip off perfectly. <laughs> I love you because we've had a hard time here, friend. <laughs> hard time with walleye and pikes, so and we gotta resort back to the old bass. Ah, I hate when that happens. If I were to give you two suggestions to get you started smallmouth fishing on Lake Muskoka, the first would be, during the early part of the bass season and up until mid-October, look for weed growth. It takes some searching, but when you find the right weed bed, the fish will be there. Come the end of the season, that's when a lot of the big fish move to deeper, classic open water structures like points, shoals, and even single boulders in 20 plus feet of water. Lake Muskoka has lots of deep water smallmouth structure. The funniest part about using deep water vertically jigging them is the smallmouth tendency is to jump anyways, so they come up 100 miles an hour, right? Eh? That's right. <laughs> nice jumper, that dude. Yeah. <laughs> Into the cabbage. Into the cabbage. These are kamikaze fish. Look at these jumps. <laughs> Easy, buddy. You good? You're good. Mm. Ouch. So as soon as we stopped at this cabbage patch, and we threw a... You threw your heart tail over top of that. I threw a spinner bait over top of that. Yep. Nothing, nothing. And then we drop a Senko in there, right beside the weeds, and get one. See, you, pal. You know what? On these cold days, they act different, right? On these yeah. frontal conditions, they act. You got to fish accordingly. To say that Mike and I caught and released a bunch of fish in the last two days is an understatement. Nice. And you just saw a small yeah, portion of them. them. Mike considers this a mediocre success rate at best. He says when you hit it right, it'll knock your socks he didn't off. Quite at all. <laughs> hey, I'm out. A little scar back. Fight was after him? Maybe, yeah. A bunch of little lines on him. Yeah. Right old. Hey, little snake. Be a good eating size. Oh, they jump so <laughs> nice, these fish. The Muskoka Lakes. There's rich people here, there's famous people here, and there's a ton of fish here. This hot spot is one of Mike's points for walleye, pike, and smallmouth. The waypoint on your screen will get you there. If the fish are cranked up, then throwing three to five inch plastics are your best bet. If the fish are slow and lethargic, then you may have to go to live bait. Work this entire hot spot area from shoreline to deep, as the fish could be anywhere on it. When using the traditional down view and side view screens of our garments, fishing spots like this one are really fun to dissect because of the strong signal sent back from the solid rock bottom. Due to the absence of weeds, fish are easy to see as well. For more hotspots like this one, visit fishingcanada.com. The Fish in Canada Show, brought to you in part by Ram Trucks, Guts, Glory, Ram. Stearns, trusted on the water since 1952. Mercury Outboards, number one on the water and Outdoor Canada, Canada's only national fishing and hunting magazine. Closed captioning for this episode is brought to you by FishingCanada.com, the gateway to your next fishing adventure.